Hello and welcome to another technical webinar from Mac Solutions on the subject of Kepware. Today's webinar is on the licensing process which is used when you are activating licenses for the Kepware software. My name is Dave Hammond, I'm the product manager for the Kepware software at Mac Solutions and we've been the UK agents for the software for over 20 years. Okay, so here is today's agenda. A brief introduction about the webinar itself, then a little bit about the steps you need to take before you begin the activation procedure itself. A section around best practices for the accounts of MyCapware, which is the licensing portal which you'll be using. Then a few slides about the activation process itself, and then a few slides around the transferable process should you need to transfer licenses from one PC to another. So it's important to say that this is just a brief overview of the licensing procedure itself. Most people won't have a problem with the licensing process itself, it's pretty straightforward. Um, but if you want step-by-step -step instructions, there are a couple of resources which you can go to. The first one is at our Mac Solutions knowledge base, where you'll find a series of step-by-step -step screen grabs. And the second one is a step-by-step -step video from Kepware themselves, which is entitled Kepserver V6 Licensing Activation, which can be found on YouTube. So before you begin, what are the things you need to get uh, sorted before you begin? Now, there are three things. The first thing is the license utility software itself, which you'll find has been installed when you download and install the Kepserver software. The second one will be the My Kepware sign-in, which you used to download the Kepserver software in the first place. Uh, the My Kepware portal is something you'll find very readily if you search the internet. And the third one is the activation ID or IDs, which are unique 36 character long strings um, for each license. Each one is unique and can only be used once on a particular PC. If your licenses are not brand new, then it's a good idea to go to the MyKepware portal and check the activation status of these licenses, um, which is not unusual for customers to unwittingly try to deploy a license which has already been deployed and is therefore not available for deployment. So if you go to the MyKepware portal, type in the license number, uh, it'll show you the status as, as you can see on the right hand side here. Now, the third thing to check is, are you using the correct version of Kepserver for the Windows operating system on, on the PC where you want to deploy the license? In the table here, you'll see that there are two versions of Kepserver which are downloadable at present, one version 5, which is the older version, and version 6, which is the current version. And you will see that uh, the different versions of Kepserver are compatible with different versions of the Windows operating system. So. If you need to use a version of Kepserver on an operating system that perhaps a bit older, pre-Windows 7, for instance, if you're using it on a desktop installation, and pre-Windows 2008 R2, if it's on a server installation, then you can use the Kepserver V6 license, which you will purchase to do an installation, a license and installation of the older version of Kepserver and version 5. So the, very, the V6 licenses are backwardly compatible, which is very useful. Now let's have a look at some best practices which you should follow when creating a MyKepware account. Now MyKepware is the online portal through which software can be downloaded, so you can try it before you buy, through which licenses are activated and they're transferred, through which license status can be checked, as we saw earlier, and through which activation histories can be viewed. You'll need the relevant email address and password in order to sign into the MyKepware account. And these are the same credentials used whether you're using the license utility or using a web browser. So here are some best practices which you should use with a MyKepware account. After a license is deployed, 
it will belong to the end user customer at, who owns the site with the software will be running. So it's important that the software should be registered in the end user's name and not in the name of any supplier, whether that be a control systems supplier or a machine supplier. It's also important that a generic email address should be used when, when creating a MyCapra account rather than an individual's email address. Uh, a name such as the automation department at or licensing at or projects at or something of that type rather than a person's name like Bob or Joe at. Um, because if, if Bob or Joe were to leave, then the license numbers would tend to get forgotten and the activation history would disappear. So if you use a generic email address and all licenses are deployed and transferred through that generic email address, then all of the activation history of all the licenses will be visible in one place. It's also important when you're activating the license to use meaningful names for the machine fields. So the machine name should be something like the PC or server name, the Windows designation, or perhaps the function of the machine within the site. And the machine location should be the factory, the department, or the production line at the site. This makes the activation history more meaningful when you're viewing it. So let's have a look at the activation process itself. This is the activation process for a PC which is connected to the internet with internet access. With such a PC, the KEB server licensing utility can automatically license the software to the MyKEB web portal with very little intervention by the user. Uh, you have to enter the username and password of the MyKEB account, which it's to be linked to. But after that, it's all done in the background automatically, very quickly and easily. Uh, one thing to note that you need to make sure that the option perform licensing operations online where possible is ticked. So this is the preferred option if the PC itself has an internet connection. Now we realize that not all PCs where you need to deploy a copy of KIP server will have an active internet connection. And if that is the case, then you need to use an intermediate PC which does have internet connection as a go-between to license the software. Typically that's done by transferring uh, the license file um, by email or file transfer or perhaps by a USB stick. The example here is going to be using a USB stick. First of all, you use the license utility on the PC, which has no internet connection. You create a license file. That license file is called an activation request file. And that activation request file is copied to the USB stick and then taken to a PC which does have an internet connection. You would use a browser on that PC to sign into the MyKepro licensing portal. You would send the license activation request file to the MyKepro portal. And in return, you'd receive a license activation response file, which you would then copy back to the USB stick back to the original PC. Once you've done that, the license itself will be activated in exactly the same way as for a PC which has internet connection. Now the next subject we're going to be covering is the transferal of KEB server licenses between machines. Sometimes it's necessary to transfer a KEBWare license from one PC to another. Perhaps you've uh, got a new PC with a new Windows OS and you want to move it to that PC. Perhaps you're changing the hardware to newer, faster hardware. Or maybe you need to remove a license from a PC where the hardware is failing. It's also necessary to remove or transfer the license from a PC if you have accidentally purchased the wrong license type within inside KEP server. You have 30 days to do this if that happens. If you have a KEPWare software license, which is a subscription license, and you decide not to renew that subscription, it's also necessary to remove the license or transfer it off. Or if you decide to upgrade from a standard individual suite like Modbus or Rockwell or Siemens or something of that nature to an industry-wide suite such as the manufacturing suite and then you can do that um, but you have to bank the 
the individual suite back to the licensing service as part of that upgrade process. Once you've done the transfer, the license will be deactivated on the original PC, the donor PC, and will be activated on the new PC, the recipient PC. Now it's important to realize that the transfer process is not done directly between the donor and the recipient PC. It also involves the My Kepware licensing portal, as we looked at earlier. So if you're doing a license transfer, it's in two steps. Step one is to transfer the license from the donor PC back to the Kepware license server. Again, using the license utility, follow the steps to transfer the license back to the My Kep server portal. Once you've done that, the license will be undeployed from this particular PC, the donor PC, and will be available for redeployment to the recipient PC, the new PC. Step two is to follow the licensing procedure as we looked at before, it's exactly the same, which is to use the license utility to transfer the license from the MyCapware portal onto the new PC. This process is exactly the same as deploying a new license. So as I said, this is a brief overview of the licensing process itself. If you want more step-by-step -step instructions, then you can go to the two resources which I mentioned earlier, the step-by-step -step screen grabs available on the Mac Solutions Knowledge Base, or the step-by-step -step video available from Kepware on YouTube. So many thanks for watching this webinar. My name is Dave Hammond from Mac Solutions. And if you have any Kipware needs, feel free to contact us. Thank you very much.